Hello, I'm Kim. And I'm Andy. And, and together, together we are the, the I Wonder Sisters. Sisters. <laughs> Yay! So um, I hope everybody had a, a good holiday season and everything. We took, uh, what was it? Christmas Day off, um, because that was normally our Goddess series. That would have been Goddess series part four, but we are going to be back at it on this Sunday. And yeah, we didn't do, do we do? We did Christmas. We didn't do New Year's Day. Yeah. Okay. So we skipped the Sunday. Um, so we'll be back next Sunday um, with uh, part four. Okay. But today is Love and Libations. Cheers, Cheers, everybody. We'll take a little sip. Nice, nice. Mm. So we we had a beautiful snowstorm. Yeah, it's, it's about thick. a foot deep. It's, yeah, it's pretty darn thick. So the the fur babies love it, you know. So um, so they've been back and forth out there, you know. So um, and it's a little chilly. <laughs> And I'm drinking freezing cold, cold beer, beer. <laughs> and my hands are numb. <laughs> yeah, I told Andy, I said, I'm going to have some wine for love and libations because, um, and, and I'm going to sit it in the sun. <laughs> so, but um, it's coming along. It's getting pretty comfortable. So today we want to finish our discussion. This is Chloe. Hi, Chloe. Say hi, Chloe. Say hello. hello hi, Chloe. Chloe. <laughs> so um today we're going to finish our discussion last week we talked about the law of attraction and many of the reasons why a lot of the things that yet yeah, you read or have been told or if you watch the movie or read a lot of gurus books um why things aren't working exactly the way that they tell you that they're going to work within the speed in which they're going to work. And we're speaking to the people that are just everyday people who have dreams and desires, um, things that they want in their lives. And they followed all of these programs and even purchased a lot of programs over the years and have found that their lives, when they look around, um, their lives look the same. And that really concerns us because people are confused. They're disappointed. Um, they're feeling undeserving. They don't know what else to do. They're feeling as if though I just didn't do it right. And so they go out and they buy another book and they buy another online program only to come up with the same thing that they still don't have the life that they're looking for. And so we talked a bit about that and the fact that there's a lot of work involved in getting from here to there, wherever here is and wherever there is. Okay. Um, you're not going to just wish it to happen and then it happens, you know, and, and I, I, you know, in a way I blame the movie a bit for that. Um, and also what the bleep do you know, um, in that they made things because it was cinema, they made things seem very instant. You know, it's like, okay, if I just get this thought in my head, oh, if I start to feel deserving, oh, you know, okay, then all of a sudden my life is going to transform, but your life may begin to transform. But what will happen, which in the end is very beautiful, is that you end up, uh, your life will bring up things that you need to really deal with, you know, and it's like real crappy when it happens and it takes time and we get impatient. But what that process does is it does start to bring up all those things that we didn't want to deal with, you know, um, that are in our past. Many are still lingering around in our present about ourselves, about how we think, how we feel, and also how we do things, you know? I mean, sometimes you just got to straighten up your program. You know, you have to do things when you say you're going to do it. Sometimes you just have to finish stuff, you know? And the at, secret left a lot of things out. Yeah. It left out the part of taking action and doing the work. Byron Katie talks about the work. And the work is hard. 
The work will take you places you may not want to go within yourself, you know, but if you don't do that work and don't take the right action, you're not going to end up there, wherever there may be. You're going to stay here. Yeah, (laughs) exactly, exactly. And so that's why at the end of the program, we're going to talk um, a bit about vision boards, uh, what they are, what they aren't, you know, and how we have found them best to work. You know, um, you have to go on that search yourself. You have to do that experiment yourself. But we can give you some options on how to do vision boards that, that first of all, don't put pressure on you to be CEO tomorrow, you know, Um but um, that inspire you to keep moving forward and drawing things into your life. Um, but first, I want to talk about a bit about the fourth dimension. We mentioned the fourth dimension a, a little bit last week, um, but we weren't able to really get into it. Now, um, Andy says, yeah, you know, you'll be the one pretty much talking about this thing because a couple of weeks ago we were sitting outside. It was a nice day. And I said to her, um, if we're living in the third dimension, why is everybody only talking about the fifth dimension? We're moving to the fifth dimension. The planet is moving towards the fifth dimension, you know, all these things, but, but what happened to the fourth dimension? You know, I mean, even times when I went to Google the fourth dimension, I got more things that were, um, more so scientific 100% than metaphysical. So what I wanted to know is what is the metaphysical meaning of the fourth dimension? So are we skipping it? And if we're skipping it, then why are we skipping it? And I was wondering why there weren't tons of people on the internet asking the question, if we're in the third, why are we worried about the fifth? What happened to the fourth? So I started doing my own research and I did come upon some people who were talking about and explaining um, the fourth dimension. Um, Many of these people were into astral travel. And so many of them had claimed that they had visited the fourth dimension and that usually if you are into astral traveling, if you don't know what that is, that is going into a trance meditation. It can happen uh, in between the space of just falling asleep and asleep or uh, being asleep and just about to wake up in those in between moments, um, you leave your body behind. You're not dying you leave your body behind and then you're able to see your body. You're able to see yourself, your surroundings, just as they are, but then you're able to travel anywhere you want to travel. So wherever your mind um, takes you to, that's where you end up. Whatever you think in the fourth dimension, it is an instant manifestation experience. It means that no matter what you think, it's going to appear in some form or fashion, okay? So a lot of the people that I read about said that it really scared them when they did visit the fourth dimension and that they probably would not do it again um, or they may do it again simply because they've educated themselves Mm -hmm. on how it actually works. But you know that a lot of crazy things, guys, A lot of crazy things go through our minds from morning until night that we don't even mean. We're like, what? what? Why why was I just thinking about jackrabbits? You know what I mean? It's just like our mind, mostly we have a little bit of of, uh, innovative thought. But the rest of that thought, you know, um, is the monkey mind. It's just back and forth all over the place. Also, we carry with us a lot of fears that we don't acknowledge, that maybe we don't talk about, that maybe we don't face. But in the fourth dimension, those fears will come to light unless you handle that before you astral travel. Okay. And so as I was reading about the fourth dimension, I I began to understand why it isn't a place 
or a um, a destination that we would be evolving that we would be evolving into. Okay, we're it's very noisy in here. Okay, all the dogs are barking. Um, I'm not sure why. I think maybe there's other dogs. There are Tweedles and Lola uh, outside. outside. Yeah. Okay, so please excuse the noise. Hey. Okay, we'll be back. 